What kind of society do we want? And for me, I want a society where people are included and connected and people's ideas are valued and their being is valued. Like, I think that's the kind of society I want to live in. And education is sort of a piece in that. Like, so when we make decisions to include or exclude people, like, that's the kind of society we're building. Education is not a privilege, it's a right. So if you can do as a faculty something that give another students a chance to get access to your course or to your learning materials, then you're, you know, um, you're taking that lead to make sure that you're sharing knowledge with more people and make it more accessible. So that's why it's essential to think about it when you're planning your course or learning materials or the design of your courses. It's about social inclusion. Where we're located, we're sort of a disability accommodation. So students with disabilities um, would register with the Disability Service Office or at UBC it's Access and Diversity. They would need to provide medical documentation or a psychoed assessment showing um, what barriers that they would experience in the classroom. And then things would need to be retrofitted for them. Um, that's a time-consuming and expensive process that also carries a lot of stigma. If you look at it as an educator, an instructor, and designer to see how I can mix uh, different parts of my course or content acts more accessible, that would help students to actually, in a way, to be able to um, have different ways of interacting with the content and to be able to uh, participate in the activity which um, at the end will enhance the whole uh, learning and teaching experience. Often people start with sort of the technical specs so WCAG 2.0 would be the technical spec for making digital content accessible um, but I think if you start there it's pretty intimidating and people don't understand why they're doing all these sort of picky maybe things that could be seen as being picky I think it, instead it's better to start from a place of empathy for the different kinds of people in the classroom and to understand what their access needs are. If you're curious about why and you care about those people, then those kind of the technical questions and what do I need to do to, to make this accessible, you're more curious and you're more interested in the answers. The most common example um, that I like to give is on the sidewalk where there's a curb cut um, the curb cut allows for people with wheelchairs to kind of access the sidewalk, but it also makes it easier for people with strollers, um, if you're pushing a bike, if you're carrying a heavy load like on a cart, everyone can access the sidewalk. So it's by thinking of those things proactively, it allows better access for everyone. So in the same way, universal design for learning, by thinking of where the digital curb cuts are in the classroom, we can allow better access for different kinds of learners, including people with disabilities.